All right, a little places here that you can go ahead and have a lunch or something in the shade. Of course, dock carts. You've seen those all over the place here. Going down Sea Dock, where the here's to us is on the T head. Now, this is a Robins 40. I kind of like that boat. I walk by it just about every day. Patent pending. Very uh, nice gentleman on there. Does a lot of fishing. And I don't see him out today. Usually he is out every day. Once or twice a day. Takes people out. You're a very successful fisher, fisherman charter operation that he has. More sailboats. Scott Free. Like that name. Monk 36. And we saw that Monk 36 like uh, Paul had on Snow Goose. More sailboats. And this is one of the longest docks here. Of course, that's where we're berthed, way at the end, near the pump out station. Sailboats and then a, a Grand Banks here that I haven't seen anybody on her at all. Looks like it is in need of some TLC. Who knows what the story is there, but Grand Banks. Can't beat the quality. And then this boat, it's a W on it, and I used to know the name of it. I don't. And I met the owner of that. Um, haven't seen him since. Saw him when we first got here. Riviera. As we make our way down here, the right hand side of Sea Dock as we're heading out toward Tracy's Creek. We'll be able to get a good view of the layout of the marina here as it as you come in through the channel. Alexis Trojan. And then see, Doc has this long tea head where they use it for transient boats. Um, they also have two pump out stations here. And they also use Part of it to stage boats for haul out uh, on this other side of it here. So we're going to go down the right side of it here. As we turn the corner, you'll see the here's to us. And then it's going to be time for a refreshment break for me as we finish up. Just seems like nothing but sailboats down this way. This has been a very quiet place to stay. Even though it's a long walk out here, we enjoyed it because well, we got a little bit of an exercise and it was quiet and we also got a pretty good breeze blowing through. So as we look through those sailboats there that That'll be B dock where we'll go, or maybe A dock. I don't know. We'll see as we get over there. It's probably B dock because maybe A dock's over there. I don't know. A Gemini here. Got a considerable amount of real estate on the top there for solar. The gentleman said, like, I don't know, 4,000 something kilowatts or watts I don't know not an expert on that but the solar panels there generate a lot and he's got a lot of lithium battery storage on board and there it is here's to us so I'm gonna go on board and get myself a cold drink To all the boating fans out there, I'd like to invite you to sign up for our, our newsletter at whatyouhavetodo.com. We'll send you a free Great Loop overview, plus several free boating goodies that you can use right now.
Plus, in each newsletter, I write a captain's corner to address what you've asked about in your comments, emails, and messages. So sign up today. All right, back out to finish up this tour here. And here's the here's to us with the brand new Platinum Burgi on the left and the Bob 423. And those of you who do not know about Bob 423, if you're going up and down the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway, you will know about him because he keeps a lot of people out of trouble. He and his wife Anne, and uh, we are fortunate enough to get to know them. Went to dinner with them in Savannah on one of our trips back there. Oh, probably in the 220s or so. All our trips are numbered sequentially from 1 through 234. 1 to 124 is on the first loop. That first loop we went from uh, the Middle River area, went up the Erie Canal, did the Trent Severn through Canada, the Georgia Bay North Channel, and down the eastern side of Lake Michigan, and down to Mobile, and down to the Florida Keys, and back up and around. And so that was one through 124. Let me tell you about what I'm looking at right here is the channel that uh, we'll leave from when we depart. And uh, we had to start our third loop. Don't know where we're going to get the third loop done, but we'll do that. And so back uh, on the, the loop series, then we pick up with uh, trip 125. And uh, because we couldn't go to Canada that time, we did all five Great Lakes. Um, boat went through the Welland Canal. We were unable to operate it through the Welland Canal due to uh, travel restrictions. And uh, from there, we went up through the Sioux Canal into Lake Superior again uh, so that we could say we did all five Great Lakes. Had a great time up there and want to do more of that. And then we did the western side of Lake Michigan. Looking out right there, that is Skipper's Pier over there. Great place to enjoy dinner and live music over there. And we can actually hear the live music on the Here's to Us when they play. Very nice area. But uh, back on our loop, the second loop, <clears throat> we came down the western side of Lake Michigan, the Wisconsin side, and uh, then I'll course there's only one way to get down through the uh, Midland from uh, the middle rivers uh, of, of the, the US uh, inland rivers channel that will go out and as we go out we'll be leaving the greens to the starboard beautiful area here so as we completed that second loop we uh, finished uh, in middle river and uh, then came down here to spend a couple months just to relax and figure out what we we're going to do i'm now at the end of sea dock tea head here sea dock like i said the longest one there's a lot of face dock area here for bigger boats or staging boats to get them hauled out. One of the areas that they will use to stage and get hauled out into the yards. And we're going to probably take a drive around some of the yards because uh, it's gravel up there and uh, we'll just take a drive around and show you some of the storage yards. But again, you can kind of see preponderance of sailboats as we walk through. Sea dock here. Now there's a work boat there, and I failed to mention it as I walked past, but that is the pump out boat, and so you can arrange to have a pump out at your slip for a nominal fee, I think about 20 bucks or so, $30, and then the pump out stations here. These are self operated, uh, two of them, and uh, instructions are here, and we've already used them once. They work great. Probably get pump out on uh, right before we uh, head up on uh, to start our third loop. We'll be fueling up and pumping out. Let's see monkeys. Let's 
Fort Fisher and another Sun Dancer, 390 Sun Dancer. We have get got to meet this couple here, very nice couple, Merrily and Walt. Seduction. I saw them detailing this boat. It took like two days, but it looks in really good shape. A cutter here. No, got to know the people on it as well. So it's been a really cool two months here. Getting to know the boat owners, the staff, and kind of see why people like it here. Not too far from the Washington, Baltimore area, you know, and you can come down here and know that your boat is secure, security 24-7 here. As we wrap up here, we're going to be seeing one of the more common boats that is on the loop that you will see. And here's another Jersey boat. We saw one of those earlier. I can't just see the craftsmanship on that. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Hunter, sailboats. Again, I'd like to know the stats on sailboats versus power boats. Maybe we'll find that out. We've already corrected ourselves and figured out there's nearly 600 slips here, 600 in the south. So that's a lot of boats. Now here is the main ship, 390 which is, like I said, a very popular boat for the loop. And they come in singles and twins and different types of engines that were put in them, but you also got to know the couple on here. So here we are at the base of Sea Dock. <laughs>